Hi, so this week we're reviewing the Garmin Zumo 350LM. Now some people say that this unit is heavily overpriced. It's nearly four times as much as your car sat-nav. But there are four important questions you need to ask yourself about your cheap sat-nav. So, will it survive a fall? Ah! It does! <laughs> <laughs> and will it survive? No, I'm really joking. Actually, you're not at the moment. <laughs> Should I really go over it? Uh, no, it works. Perfectly, good. Will it survive water? And can I punch the screen with my gloves on? I bet not, so that's why I need a Garmin Zumo 350LM. Other important questions to ask are whether it will survive the vibrations on a motorcycle. And will the screen reflect the sunlight, making reading difficult? So Alexis, tell me how the uh, Zumo fits to the bike. Well, you have this mount that it catches with these teeth here. The only thing that I would say it's not lockable, so there constantly is the worry that at some point, maybe over a space of like three, four years, when the springs that operate these teeth here, that they might give way and then the Zumo might end up on the road. I, I think it would have been nicer if, if there would have been like a lock on here where you can lock the Zumo in place. What about the mount? Is that quite easy to? Uh, the mount is quite easy to uh, uh, stick put here on the on the handlebar. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that uh, the GPS is powered by a cable mm -hmm. uh, running to the battery of the motorcycle. And the sad thing is that the cable itself, you know, it can move about. And it happened once already because I do a lot of off-roading, and it actually once did get cut, and then I had to sort of like repair the cable. So maybe a good thing. Either if Garmin put an extra layer onto the cable here to protect it, or when you're laying, when, when you're putting the cable underneath the seat, make sure that you gaffer tape it into a place so that it doesn't go moving about and end up uh, getting cut by uh, being stuck in between the frame, for example, and the seat. So tell me about the software, what are the different route planners and options you have? Well, there's different ways how you can plan your trips. First of all, if you go on here and press apps, you have the trip planner and you can create a new trip according to the various uh, points of interest that you have. Mm -hmm. Most software that you get is only made for road use, so you'll see roads and things like that, um, but and highways and motorways, but you won't actually see like off-road tracks like this one. So what you can do is you can start a, you can choose a, a, a starting point for a journey and then record the whole trip with a trackback system and then select an endpoint and then save the whole thing as a, as, a, as a track for later use and you can share that with others on the on the internet. Uh, if you just simply for example go to Basecamp which is a very useful uh, software from Garmin you can create your track there and just simply then afterwards there's a simple instructions about how, how, how to send it to the unit and you can just transfer it down there and then it'll show up on the screen straight away. Now some people they make the mistake they expect this to show up instantly on the unit and then when they don't see it there they think it hasn't transferred but it actually does take a bit you switch the unit on and after you've unplugged it from the computer and it can take between 15 to 30 seconds for that trip that you've created on the computer to actually appear it comes also with a service history and it says to you for example you know about uh, oil chain greasing and when you last change the air filter and stuff like that and brake fluid change especially here with the with the oil and grease chain i can see on my motorcycle in real life when i last oiled and greased my chain i don't need my garmin zumo to tell me that and i think the space that was used up the software space on the unit would have actually been more usefully invested in, in other features like for example and this is the real big downside is the compass you press on it and as you can see you can twist and turn it around and uh, nothing happens so I mean if you guys if you have worked out how to use this then please feel free to put in the comment section below the video your advice and your recommendations are more than welcome I'd probably just use a normal compass that you wear around your neck when you go orienteering so this is an excellent sat nav it's robust and it's tough but a few of the extras like the compass he's revising by Garmin the only thing that I would say if you do decide to get the Garmin Zumo 350 LM just make sure you get the right model for you because this one uh, uh, will direct you onto the motorways and I personally love motorways because to me they feel like speed regulated track days where everybody's invited and uh, it doesn't 
What? Oh, curvy roads? Uh, the other models, they do curvy roads, but uh, what, I, what we'll be doing is we'll be posting a link at the bottom of the video in the comment section, and that will give you a full list of all the various uh, Garmin Zumo 350 models, and also 390 and so on, and then you can see which one is right for you. The Garmin Zumo 350 LM is definitely the right model for me. And I'm definitely going to get one for the 450 quid that's worth. It's definitely going to help me when I want to go off the beaten track and uh, refrain from getting lost. Excellent. Get one. <laughs>